Namaste. Friends, disciples, and devotees. Today I continue my talk concerning the demonic and hostile powers, but I want to add also something to this, and that is that it doesn't matter how much darkness there is in the world. And even if you call yourself a bhakta, a disciple, or a devotee, we are still only a handful among the billions of the world who have opened to Sri Aurobindo and Mother. And therefore, we must feel completely that they will resolve all of this, for no darkness can long survive the light. And the supramental is at work if we calm our being, we can feel it's working in many areas of this beloved earth. So let me begin. <clears throat> there are forces and beings that are interested in maintaining the falsehoods they have created in the world of ignorance and in putting them forward as the truth which men must follow. In India, they are termed asuras, rakshasas, bisachas, being respectively of the mentalized vital, middle vital, and lower vital planes, who are in opposition to the gods, the powers of light. These two are powers, for they too have their cosmic field in which they exercise their function and authority, and some of them were once divine powers who have fallen towards the darkness by revolt against the divine will behind the cosmos. The word appearances refers to the forms they take in order to rule the world. Forms often false and always incarnating falsehood, sometimes pseudo divine. Sri Aurobindo has so much to tell us. The Asuras and Rakshasas do not belong to the earth, but to superphysical worlds. But they act upon the earth life and dispute the control of human life and character and action with the gods. They are the powers of darkness combating the powers of life. The hostile forces, the purpose they serve in the world is to give a full chance to the possibilities of the inconscience and ignorance, both words capitalized. For this world was meant to be a working out of these possibilities with the supramental harmonization as its eventual outcome. The life, the work developing here in the ashram has to deal with the world problem and has therefore to meet, it could not avoid, the conflict with the working of the hostile powers in the human being. The universe is certainly, or has been up to now, in appearance, a rough and wasteful game with the dice of chance loaded in favor of the powers of darkness the lords of obscurity, falsehood, death, 
and suffering. But we have to take it as it is and find out if we reject the way out of the old sages, the way to conquer. Spiritual experience shows that there is behind it all a wide terrain of equality, peace, calm, freedom. And it is only by getting into it that we can have the eye that sees and hope to gain the power that conquers. If there were no hostile forces and there was still the evolutionary world, there could be ignorance still, but not perversity in the ignorance. All would be a partial truth acting through imperfect instruments. But for the best purposes of this or that, in a progressive manifestation. The hostile forces are those which try to pervert everything and are in revolt against the divine and opposed to the yoga. It is a fact always known to all yogis and occultists since the beginning of time in Europe and Africa as in India, that wherever yoga or yajna is done, there the hostile, for hostile forces gather together to stop it by any means. It is known that there is a lower nature and a higher spiritual nature. It is known that they pull different ways, and the lower is strongest at first and the higher afterwards. It is known that the hostile forces take advantage of the movements of the lower nature and try to spoil through them, smash or retard the city. It has been said as long ago as the Upanishads, hard is the path to tread, sharp like a razor's edge. It was said later by Christ, hard is the way and narrow the gate by which one enters into the kingdom of heaven. And also many are called, few chosen, because of these difficulties. But it has also always been known that those who are sincere and faithful in heart and remain so, and those who rely on the divine will arrive in spite of all difficulties, stumbles, or falls. Normal human defects are one thing. They are the working of the lower nature of the ignorance. The action of the hostile forces is a special intervention, creating violent inner conflicts, abnormal depressions, thoughts and impulses of a kind which can be easily recognized as suggestions, such as leaving the ashram, abandoning the yoga, revolt against the divine, suggestions of calamity and, and catastrophe, apparently irresistible, irrational impulses, and so on. It is a different order from the usual human weaknesses. There are some who are never touched by the hostile forces. The lower nature is ignorant and undivine, not in itself hostile, but shut to the light and truth. The hostile forces are anti-divine, not merely undivine. They make use of the lower nature, pervert it, fill it with distorted movements, and by that means influence man and even try to enter and possess or at least 
entirely control him. The forces of the lower nature are often rebellious and resist transformation out of attachment to the familiar movements of the ignorance, desire, vanity, pride, lust, self-will, etc. But they are not in their nature hostile. The hostile forces are those whose very raison d'etre is revolt against the divine, against the light and truth, and enmity to the divine divine work. The hostile forces have a certain self-chosen function. <clears throat> it is to test the condition of the individual, of the work, of the earth itself, and their readiness for the spiritual descent and fulfillment. At every step of the journey, they are there attacking furiously, criticizing, suggesting, imposing despondency or inciting to revolt, raising unbelief, amassing difficulties. No doubt they put a very exaggerated interpretation on the rights given them by their function, making mountains even out of what seemed to us a molehill. A little trifling step or mistake, and they appear on the road and clap a whole Himalaya as a barrier across it. But this opposition has been permitted from of old, not merely as a test or ordeal, but as a compulsion on us to seek a greater strength, a more perfect self-knowledge, an intenser purity and force of aspiration, a faith that nothing can crush, a more powerful descent of the divine grace. Namaste.